This is Kalma refugee camp, home to nearly 200,000 Darfuris. After 20 years of conflict, the camp has become a city and two million people across the region have been displaced. We are one of the first international journalists to travel freely here in a decade. The world's attention may have shifted, but the memories of the conflict are still fresh here. Elias was 19 when he fled his burning home. In the morning he teaches, and in the afternoon he cuts hair to earn a bit of extra cash. The next generation of Darfuris are growing up in these camps. All their children study in temporary classrooms. Their parents are too scared to return to their homes. The government of Sudan wants these people to go back to their areas. It says it's safe enough. There's a peace process ongoing. People here have told me more than once that it's very difficult for them to move back to their homes when there is no security. The conflict in Darfur began in 2003, when ethnic African rebels took up arms against Omar al-Bashir's Arab-dominated government. Bashir responded by arming local militias known as the Janjaweed. They burnt villages and killed anyone that got in their way. Local sheikhs say their lands are still occupied by settlers brought in from neighboring countries. For them, putting Bashir on trial is not enough. So Muhammad Yahya here is telling me that although there had been a shift in Khartoum, the people who were overseeing the genocide and the ethnic cleansing are at the helm of power in this country and that the new prime minister, although he's visited a government-controlled area, he hasn't come to visit people who are affected like the people here in Kalma. Peacekeepers patrol the lanes of Kalma, but not for long. In November, the UN withdrew most of its troops from South Darfur, leaving just 200 to patrol an area the size of England. They planned to pull out completely within a year. This UN base was meant to be transformed into a new university campus. As the last of the peacekeepers left, the base was looted whilst government troops watched. The suffering in Darfur was a central rallying cry of the protesters during the five-month revolution that ousted Bashir last April. But did these words echo as far as Darfur? This attack at the end of last year suggests not. 50 people were killed and 40,000 were displaced when their camp was burnt. As long as attacks like these go unpunished, there will be no peace. <laughs>